So one of the things I've been doing with these videos is revisiting some of the metal that's been influential for me. Another thing I've been doing is trying to learn riffs that I wouldn't normally have any reason to put time into. This short video does both by looking at one of the tapping sections of the absolute banger first track from Protest the Hero's masterpiece, Fortress. This is one of the first metal songs I remember really liking, and man has it held up. This fits my other criteria also because I never practice tapping anymore, so it's been fun to dust something like this off. And as it turns out, there's a fun little theory idea that's directly related to the tapping. But first, some basics. This riff comes as kind of like a post-chorus, a little section between the end of the first chorus and the start of the second verse. It's based on the same 15-16 to 4-4 alternating meter that showed up in the intro riff. Jose Garza has a cool dissertation where he talks about these sorts of things. They're super characteristic of metal, especially progressive metal. Here's that intro riff. It's like we get three full beats and then one beat that's cut short by one 16th note, then a regular measure of 4-4. It gives us this kind of jolty feel like you just barely miss a step on that first 15-16 measure. <laughs> The chugging stuff that happens under the tapping riff that I'm talking about for this video uses the same alternating meter as that intro riff, but the pattern is a little different. And the tapping part fills out this same alternating meter with straight 16th notes. In addition to the alternating meter, this section does a couple other things that are super typical in progressive metal. The first is that the tapping riff is an ABAC additive metrical process, which is this thing that's all over the place where you get some beginning of something, then an ending, then the same beginning and a longer ending. We have to re-notate a little to see this, but we get two beats as a beginning, then one ending that lasts for seven sixteenth notes, then two beats as the same beginning again, uh, and then a different ending that lasts for eight sixteenth notes. <laughs> Those things are all over the place when you start listening for them. The other thing that's maybe a little less common is that this section has a built-in expanding return. So basically we get twice through this whole tapping riff, then one measure of the intro riff, then twice more through the tapping riff, and then two measures of the intro riff. That thing where the interrupting part, so the intro riff, gets repeated more times when it comes back is what I call an expanding return. And it's a pretty common way of organizing fragmented material like this in progressive metal. Another cool thing that I'm not sure how common it is, is that the unstable 15-16 measure also has an unstable dominant harmony, which resolves back to tonic for the 4-4 stable measure. Theorists love finding these things where rhythm and harmony act like each other or reinforce each other. So yeah, here's that. <laughs> As promised, here's that cool little idea that this riff made me think about. There's a relatively recent trend in music theory of paying more attention to what musicians are doing with their instruments and how music feels to them, as opposed to thinking of music as like disembodied sound. I think that trend is pretty cool, so here's a small example. 
basically, I feel like what my fingers do in this riff kind of superimposes a counter rhythm on this short tapping riff. A counter rhythm that only I can feel while I'm playing it. In more concrete terms, what's happening is when I'm listening, the tapping rhythms seem to group pretty straightforwardly as 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 3, and then 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So that's the 15, 16 bar, and then the, 16, the 4, 4 bar, 16, 16 bar. But what I'm doing with my hands when I play guitar is I'm tapping with my right hand every three notes. So that kind of feels like it groups it to me as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, and then 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. <laughs> This isn't really uncommon. In guitar you have all sorts of stuff where maybe the notes are rhythmically grouped into fours but you're only playing three notes on a string. And a big part of learning guitar is to be able to hide these like string changing rhythms or whatever, make it so that you're just playing notes instead of playing stuff that sounds like it's coming from a guitar necessarily. Although that's not true for all guitar music. The tapping in this riff made it more obvious to me, maybe because I'm less used to tapping. It's like the st skipping strings I don't even notice when I'm playing, but I, I do notice when, when I'm making these rhythms with both hands on the fretboard. And from the little I know about wind instruments, it seems like this can be a huge thing with, with them, where the mapping between pitch and fingering is not at all straightforward. But I do kind of think that superimposed patterns of different lengths are such a big thing in progressive metal that it feels relevant to find one of these super subtle ones kind of hidden in this riff. So anyways, here's this whole section with the recording. So yeah, this album wall to wall slaps. I guess I'll finish by asking if anyone can think of other examples of these like hidden counter rhythm things, or just generally examples where what you play because of the physical layout of your instrument feels very different from what the music sounds like to someone who's not playing it. If you've got any sweet examples like these, feel free to throw them in the comments or you know just write whatever you want down there. I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya.